thanks everyone uh, for, for coming here uh, before the Thanksgiving night. Uh, I'm Alex Sarian. I'm CEO and co-founder of Xcloud Networks. Xcloud Networks is one of the uh, Skydeck core companies. We are building a, a network automation software for you know managing large web scale data center networks. Uh, so uh, my co-founders and I, our background is coming from uh, data center telco management. We've been basically network engineers and we've been managing large scale data centers primarily for operators for foreign translation for example and our idea was like hey we do lots of manual stuff why don't we automate the job of network engineer because oftentimes we saw that within these big large data centers uh, engineering network engineering is becoming like a bottleneck for uh, for the business the business has some new crazy ideas which requires deploying 25 new racks of servers or workloads and network engineers are taking lots of time to configure switches and routers just because you know networks are complex uh, so back then that was an idea and two and a half years ago we started to hack a solution and uh, I will keep telling you about this stuff soon so uh, I know lots of people are on this idea that public cloud, everything is moving to public cloud. So a lot of things are moving to the public cloud, but the thing is that in this planet, we need to build so much of infrastructure that we're gonna end up building lots of physical infrastructure and lots of cloud. So both of these things are important. So this graph represents number of autonomous uh, system numbers. Basically, every every company which owns an infrastructure is represented here as a one unit. Facebook, being the largest infrastructure in the world, is represented here like the one, and small ISP, which is maybe selling internet connection in your neighborhood, is again represented here as a one. So point here is that this number is growing. Yes, your Adobe Photoshop from your computer has moved to public cloud called Adobe Creative Cloud, but Adobe went obtained one of these numbers and obtained lots of equipment to make your Adobe Photoshop to run in Adobe Creative Cloud. So our we are addressing those companies which are running their own, they own the cloud, they own the physical infrastructure. And, and another chart, basically number of servers are growing, meaning that these companies are also growing in size, which means that these companies need to uh, take care about how fast can they grow. So what's what's wrong with traditional networking technologies? Like we, everyone here probably heard about this company called Cisco and network engineers, these Cisco certified people are, have been managing these networks for, for ages and it looked good. But the problem is that <clears throat> the cost is very high. Management of the network is very complex. So when your network keeps growing at incredibly at incredible speeds, companies basically need to hire more and more network engineers. And these days, the amount of infrastructure we need to build is growing much faster than we produce network engineers. So we need to build something between network engineer and infrastructure so the world can basically grow further. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, so we, we found the uh, opportunity behind the technology called open networking. It's, it was started by Facebook. Facebook's idea was like, hey, we are the largest infrastructure in the world. Why don't we build network device? Why don't we engineer a network device and build that device for ourselves? So they did, but they also, what they did, they open sourced the reference design. And now more than 10 hardware vendors like HP, Dell, Mellanox, NVIDIA, many, many hardware vendors are building 
standardized devices using Facebook's reference architecture, known as uh, open networking hardware. So the open networking hardware can run uh, different operating systems. Linux pretty much Linux-based operating systems. There are commercial flavors of operating system. There are open source free operating system. Microsoft has its own flavor of network operating system called Sonic. And like Microsoft Azure is fully running on, on this uh, operating system. I mean, the, their network stack is running on this operating system. And ma many companies start paying attention to these technologies. Like, hey, if it works for Facebook, why don't we adopt it? And the problem is that adopting this new technology, which is a lot promising, but it requires lots of new skills and requires lots of development on top of it. Like pretty much with anything open source. It's great, it's fantastic. As long as you are willing to go look into the source code, make the changes, contributions, and so on. And networks, because networks are historically so complex and uh, failures in, in network may, may damage the whole business of the company, it's just hard. So what we did, we <coughs> built uh, software, which runs on top of operating system, and we built a controller. Uh, controller has graphical user interface. I, I'm gonna show a short demo of all this thing, a real data center running with all these things at the end of this presentation. So now I just want to explain the technology. So there's a controller. Uh, and in, in previous life, network engineers would go use the terminal to connect to all these network devices to configure network devices pretty much one by one manually. And any mistake, any misconfiguration would, would lead to like a, you, you probably heard like, like AWS was down for a day or Azure was down for a day. All these things are human failures. So we are telling like, hey, go and configure the controller. Don't touch the devices at all. Because we have a small agent, a piece of software, which sits on top of operating system. It looks the routing tables. It looks the configurations. And we have algorithm which, which uh, reads information, user-defined, uh, intent of the user, what do you need to set up at the end of the day? Is it a VPC? Is it a load balancer? Whatever it is, and our software turns that into actual configuration in a safe way without risk of making mistakes. Uh, so that's the basic uh, technology. Uh, this thing is made for data center, large scale data centers in mind. So <clears throat> it, it, it is using simple building blocks. So it's economically viable for a small company with two or four racks, but also it's, it, it is scalable at the size of Facebook. So the customers which are currently using this technology, they, they are at the size of maintaining like 500 to 2000 physical servers and maintaining up to 100 of uh, network devices. We are just early stage startups, so our customers are, for now, are pretty much small customers. This technology is tested in our lab to run for 10,000 of switches. So our simulations are for 10,000 of switches. And how we achieve that scale is because the software which is running inside the, uh, the network devices it's a distributed software. All the intent to configuration translations is done in a distributed way. So every device is running its own uh, uh, own piece of software. And basically, when you are adding more and more devices, you are not increasing computational requirements for from every every copy of uh, agent which is doing this translation. Uh, so, we are startup. 
we operate on assumptions, but we always want to uh, make sure that our assumptions are correct. So we always keep talking to our customers, getting feedback, and they are returning back to us that their business is accelerated in the way that many network operations taking previously several days are done in several minutes because it is built-in automation. It helps them to scale uh, elastically because they don't need to think about vendor and architecture. They basically add building blocks and they just scale. And uptime is improved because it's automated. There's no room for human mistake. And eventually they save lots of capex and opex because this thing is a multi-vendor. It allows them to use not to be locked in with a Cisco, but instead go and buy off-the-shelf standard hardware, just use it, which is basically low-cost hardware. Helps them to save money, which otherwise would require incredible efforts in terms of learning curve. Uh, it's just a you know, commercial slide, a real use case. The company saved about a million dollars just on one deployment. And this company recently became 11th fastest growing company in the Bay Area. Uh, in our team, we, we like to make a joke like this, this is because of our software. Of course, that's because of many, many other things they implement in their company, but one piece that contributes to their uh, success is our software with, because it automates part of their job. Uh, last slide before demo. So uh, if, if, you, if you think about comparing this technology with whatever else available on the market, like we're not the only smartest people in this world of networking, there are two other companies which compete with us, but uh, so that company, Big, Big Switch Networks, they are based on very on legacy technology. They started like 10 years ago and the only available <coughs> technology uh, appeared not to be viable enough. And the other company, they abstract, they are trying to be like a best of two worlds between traditional and open networking technologies. We don't do that. We don't pay attention to traditional networking. We laser focus on open net networking technologies. And we think this is the way for us to go because that allows us to have opportunity to build absolutely the best software for that particular world. Uh, I'm ready to go for the demo, but are there any, any questions so far about these things? So if no questions, I will show the demo. So this is the graphical user interface. Uh, so th this thing has graphical user interface and of course RESTful API. We understand there's DevOps thing in the world and DevOps people are welcome. Everything which I'm showing in the graphical user interface is also available through API. So DevOps people love to kind of attach their automation to this thing. So this is actual network topology. This is real-time running thing somewhere in a lab and I'm connected remotely to this thing. So we have uh, four, uh, uh, six switches here, these two and these four. Uh, so this is basically a design tool where network engineers can design their physical networks, their cables. And while in traditional world they would need to connect with the terminal to every of these devices and make configurations of every describing what every connected cable is supposed to do. In this case, they basically connect ports. I want to connect this device to this device on this port, and that's it, they just ports. They, it's the minimal required information we just need to collect to make it work. So they build their uh, base of the network, they connect their network to the internet 
here's a place where they describe, here's my internet provider, this is the physical port, it is connected. These are parameters which my internet provider told me to put into my system, and it just works. Now, I have a server connected to one of these switches, so this is console of that server. We have this IP address configured, and I want to start the ping to gateway IP, and you see there's destination was now reachable. And I'm trying to create a service, a VPC, like, like in AWS. I'll call it VPC1. I need to select the site, so this thing is designed for multi-site. Uh, I need to select the physical port where it is connected. So for simplicity, I put the alias as a SRV05, it's the name of my server. So I select that physical port, I attach IP address, so, so this thing understands that these are two networks available, particular site. I select network, I select one IP address from there, I click add. Uh, it says provisioning. Provisioning takes about one minute. And you see now it just started to work. So it gets running. And then further, uh, uh, so that's the idea. You, 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 you define the services. You can get connection to the public internet. You, you, you have a little security thing here where you can, like, if there is a security manager which tells we don't allow every type of communication, we want to limit traffic. There's this security thing, there's load balancer thing. So pretty much like in a public cloud. So with the name of xCloud Networks, idea was we bring cloud style <coughs> management principles into a physical data center. So we turn help customers to turn their physical infrastructure into their private cloud. Uh, that's it. Thanks for attention. Any questions? So if you had a, a pilot that was ongoing, how, what exactly did you do with the pilot customer? Is it installing a couple servers or many servers? Sort of that, okay. Yeah, so we, we have five customers that are running this at production, and we have a few more pilots ongoing. Uh, so how it typically works, customers look at this. So open networking itself is a new technology, and our approach is a new approach on top of new technology. So it's kind of adoption curve. So customers look at this and sometimes they find uh, uh, benefits in terms of improvement in their management, in terms of time and cost saving. Then they're like, let's run a pilot. So we, for the pilot, we can do like one like this, so which I'm demoing. So this is one of our demo labs, which we, they are ready to use. We give to customers so they can start using immediately. And then they, so, you know, network is a critical piece of infrastructure. They need to run an actual proof of concept. So how they do that, they, they get like several units of equipment and actual physical boxes they install our software on top of these boxes and they plug these boxes into their production network and they shift part of their critical traffic to this. They leave it to run for like a month to make sure that there are no failures. If, it good, if it's good, we have a contract they sign and then we help them to plan the actual migration. So all, all our customers, in terms of feedback, all our customers are happy. We went through stages until we get customers separate. With, with the first customer, there were failures. With the second customer, there were failures. We've been developing this for two and a half years now. But now we finally reached that point where customers are actually happy. It is it's pretty stable. So like our largest customer is using this for about 100 switches. And, and it's stable. It's all their business. They really trust their business to, to this solution. Well, let's give it a hand for that.